Tonight we are spraying a collection of products, of course, evening and early morning are the best time to spray liquid fertilizer when the stomata are open. We have simple long solutions, 13, 18, 18. This is the reason I'm actually out here spraying. But when you're spraying, I like to add in some other things so that I don't have to come back and do it. I recently did liquid iron, but since I'm out here a week or so later, I want to do some more iron even though it doesn't really need it quite yet. I'm also doing a quarter pound of ammonium sulfate. That's gonna really help the green up along with the iron. Of course, we don't spray without citric acid. Any brand will do. A surfactant, be mindful with it, especially with the ammonium sulfate. Definitely can burn together. Be super, super mindful. Not applying this now, but I'm really looking forward to applying this uh, humic acid. Humic acid, fulvic acid together, they're called humates. Uh, you basically wanna put those down as much as you can. They don't get as much attention as some of the other products. But outside of your core fertilizers, they are, you know, similar to compost, a very essential piece of the puzzle. So we're putting down citric acid, of course, for the water because we're in this city. And if you're in Arlington like I am, Arlington, Texas, or honestly, most city waters are going to have high pH. Mine is around 8 or so. And you want to get that below 7 for optimal results. So we add citric acid in. Super cheap again. Any brand, doesn't matter. Surfactant is normally not used with fertilizers, but we are going to do that today. We have a little bit of nitrogen in this, not much, but it's mainly a potassium and a phosphorus. Of course, iron. We love a dark green lawn. This is always the way to go. I have a good detailed video on all the different irons and what iron is best for you. He's about 455 yards away. He's going to hit about a two iron, I think. There's no blanket answer for the best iron on the market, but this is a pretty good option. Quite happy with the results from this. All right, while I'm out spraying, let's break down what's actually going on to the lawn here, especially that 31818 from Simple Lawn Solutions, which is the newest product I'm trying. I've got a full mix in the Heart Backpack Sprayer, darker green for iron, a quarter pound of ammonium sulfate for added nitrogen, a non-ionic surfactant, citric acid, and of course, the 131818 liquid fertilizer from SLS. Now this fertilizer is built on three key ingredients, potassium nitrate, aqua ammonia, and phosphoric acid. Let's talk about each and what makes them different. First up is potassium nitrate. This is a highly soluble source of potassium paired with nitrate nitrogen. The nitrate form of potassium is immediately available to the plant and moves easily through both the soil and the leaf tissue. That makes this a good choice for foliar feeding because it actually gets to the plant instead of just sitting on the leaf, which is you know quite common with other fertilizers. Just because they're liquid doesn't necessarily mean that they get absorbed by the leaf. Potassium itself helps with stress tolerance and cell wall strength, and because this is a potassium nitrate instead of potassium chloride or sulfate, there's no added salt or sulfur load, which is ideal for foliar use. Then there's aqua ammonia, which is a water-based form of ammonia called nitrogen. This type of nitrogen is positively charged, so it binds with the soil particles more readily than nitrate, which reduces leaching. That said, it's not ideal for foliar uptake. It's really here to support root uptake after watering in. It also slightly acidifies the spray solution, which is helpful when paired with products like iron or phosphorus that prefer a lower pH. And finally, phosphoric acid. This is the form used for the phosphorus in this product, and it's one of the most soluble and available forms that you can use. Unlike granular forms like MAP or DAP, which can bind up quickly in high pH soils, phosphoric acid has a better shot at actually entering the plant when used as a foliar. It helps drop the pH of the tang mix, which improves nutrient availability across the board, especially with the iron, manganese, and zinc if you're adding those. To help all this get into the plant, I'm using a non-ionic surfactant. That reduces surface tension so that the spray spreads out evenly across the blade, rather than beating up and rolling off. It doesn't react chemically with anything in the tank, it just helps improve contact and absorption, especially for foliar nutrients. I'm also adding citric acid, which serves two purposes in this mix. First, to help lowers the pH of the spray solution, which can keep nutrients like iron and phosphorus more stable and available during the application. Second, it acts as a mild complexing agent, not a true chelator like EDTA or EDDHA, which we talked about in previous videos, but it's still useful. It can help prevent nutrients from binding up in the tank and may slightly improve uptake on the leaf by keeping the elements dissolved and mobile for longer. What's interesting about this formula is the foliar phosphorus. Most people think of phosphorus as a soil only nutrient, but by spraying it, especially in the form of phosphoric acid, can actually bypass some of the most common soil issues. In high aluminum or high pH soils, granular phosphorus tends to get locked up fast, forming insoluble compounds that the plant can't use. And in clay heavy soils, you get a buildup of phosphorus at the surface that's hard for roots to access. Foliar spraying avoids all that. 
You're delivering it straight to the leaf where it can enter the plant directly, especially helpful during stress or when root uptake is limited. It's not a total replacement for soil phosphorus, but in a spoon feeding program, it fills a valuable role. I sprayed this on Thursday about three days ago, and then in this clip here is Sunday morning, uh, almost 72 hours later. I did get a silver haze in parts of the lawn, not everywhere, but some areas flashed a bit more than others. That's almost always from the iron, especially when it dries quickly or isn't fully absorbed. Next time I might either bump up my spray volume, apply closer to sunset, or even cut back on the iron slightly depending on the temps and the wind. I follow the label max, but I am exceeding the frequency because I just applied it last week. But overall, it's looking strong. If you're into dialing in your lawn care beyond just throwing down a bag, definitely check out turfgrassform.com. That's where a lot of this testing and discussion happens in real time, spraying strategies, soil challenges, product feedback, everything. And if you're growing Bermuda grass, come on over to my blog, thebermudabible.com. It's a go-to guide I put together with everything I've learned on growing dark, dense Bermuda in tough conditions like we get here in Texas. Both of these are free sources that I've built for you guys who want better results without the fluff.